The next slide here talks about the chameleon measuring activity. How many of you like that activity? One person, two, three, oh, four, all right. <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you that when I first saw it, I was a little iffy on it, but then the more I thought about it, there's a lot you can do with that activity to engage a lot, to embed a lot of language in it. You can embed all those different concepts that are up there. And maybe you're using some of those words already. You can practice some following directions too. You can do a one-step direction. You can do a two-step direction. There's a lot as far as a speech therapist that, that you can do to make that lesson more engaging for the children. So in your handout, um, I did write up how I would present it for a child that's more advanced and then how I would present it for a child that's more, that's a little below what's expected. So I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit, but I need to get a drink of water here. For the child that ha is living in a language enriched home and seems to be a little more advanced, I would go ahead and introduce the lesson and I always call it setting the stage. I would start with that word measure because that child may have been exposed to that word. So I would start out by saying, what do you measure with? What do mom and dad measure with? What does grandpa measure with? See if they can come up with the objects that you measure with. And as I'd mentioned before about the concrete, you know, if you actually have the object and you can show them, that makes it more real for them. And if they can't come up with anything, you say, well, we can measure with a tape measure. Look, we can measure the book. And there are numbers on here to tell us how big that book is. Or you could measure with a ruler. So you're gonna display those things so this puts a little bit more meaning to the word measure. Then you're gonna to say to the child, we're going to do a measuring activity using these leaves and these chameleons. Let's talk about these leaves first. And I would present the leaves to the child and ask the child to do a comparison. Comparison skills are extremely important. Children will do comparing all the way through school. It's a very important skill. And if you can use that in your lessons, that's a wonderful thing to include. So I would show these leaves to the children and ask them, how are they alike? And hopefully they would say they're green. How are they different? And hopefully they'd say one's big and one's little. So they're making the comparison of how they're alike and how they're different, which are some of those concept words that we had talked about. Then I'd say, I'd let the child choose which leaf to start with. And I'm gonna hold them away from the child because I don't want them just pointing. I want them verbalizing what they, they want to start with. And I don't want them saying that one. I want them to use that descriptive word, the big one. And if they say that one, I'll say, which one? And even if they're pointing, I still kind of give them a little bit of time to come up with that descriptive word. And most of the time, children always pick big. They tend to pick big stickers. They want the big book and the big prize. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say the child chose the big leaf. So then I say, all right, now we're going to use these chameleons. And I put the chameleons in a jar that has a turn lid because right there is practicing a fine motor skill. They have to turn. And I can't tell you how many children I work with that do not know how to turn to take a lid off of something. So then I'm going to give them a two-step direction. And I'm only going to give it one time and allow the child time to try and pull out what I said. So right there, I'm practicing following directions. So I'm going to say to the child, how about if you get two green chameleons and two red chameleons out of the container? And then I'm gonna to wait to see if the child can follow that direction. They pull the chameleons out and then say, I'm gonna tell them to put them on the leaf. And then I'm gonna say, line them up. There's another concept word. So if they don't know how to line it up, I'm gonna line them up and I'll say, look, I put them in a line and then I'm gonna mix them up and say, your turn, you put them in a line. So I modeled the direction for them if they didn't understand that idea. And then, I, then for the next part of the lesson, then I would do the guessing, because now they've seen, we've demonstrated what we're doing. Say, well, now we need to measure the little leaf. How many chameleons do you think we need? And if they say three, then I'm gonna give a two-step direction for them to get three chameleons out, and then we can see if that's the right number or not. I've left the chameleons in a line on that big leaf, and now they have chameleons on the little leaf. And again, you can do some comparing. Now, how are the leaves alike? 
And you can talk about this one's longer because it needed more chameleons and count how many chameleons. So that's how I would present that lesson for the child that's more advanced. For the child that is struggling, however, I would not introduce that word measure at the beginning of that activity because measure is abstract. You can't hold on to the word measure. You can't hold on to measure. What is that? I'm going to start out and set the stage by just telling the child we're going to do an activity. So I'll start out by saying, look, I have leaves and I have chameleons. We're going to do an activity with these. Let's look at these leaves. Hmm, I notice that this leaf is big, but this leaf, and I'm gonna wait to see if they can label it with small or little. And I'll say, you're right, this one's big and this one's little. Which leaf should we start with? And again, let the child choose, and hopefully they'll use that word, the big, they'll use that adjective, big. And then I'm going to say to them, all right, well, let's use these chameleons. We're gonna put some chameleons on the leaf. And again, I'm going to give them a direction, but that child might only get a one-step direction, get one red chameleon. Or if they don't know their colors, maybe I'll pull out a red chameleon and say, oh, I've got red. Can you find one that looks like this? So if they don't know their colors, you're stepping it down a step lower and asking them to match the colors. So once you get your chameleons on the leaf, then I'm gonna say, hmm, we have all the chameleons on the leaf. Let's see if we can line them up. And I'll give the child a chance to line them up, but if they can't, then I'm going to put them in a line. And again, I'll say, oh, we got them in a line. Look, they're lined up and count the chameleons, how many? And then I'm gonna mix them up and give it to the child and let them put it in a line. Then I'm gonna bring up that word measure. Oh, I just realized we measured the leaf. We found out how long the leaf is. It's four chameleons long. We measured it using chameleons. And then I would continue in the same way with the little leaf. And again, I might wanna compare the leaves. And then at the end of the lesson, I might say, you know, we measured with chameleons. I know we can also measure with a tape measure and then I'll bring it out and show them. But by waiting to introduce that word measure, you've given them something to hold that word onto. You've displayed how to measure. You're not starting out with the word that doesn't have a lot of meaning for them.